Welcome to Liberty Ministries International, a ministry that is dedicated to your personal development and spiritual growth. Here, we equip you with tools and resources that will facilitate your transformation into what God has ordained you to be. And now, Reverend Lara brings you today's inspirational message. Thank you for this time with you, oh God. Thank you for this time with you tonight. Lord, as we gather together to hear your voice, Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will open our ears and you will help us to hear you today. Speak to our hearts, oh Lord. Speak to our hearts, oh Lord. We desire to hear your voice today. In the name of Jesus, we desire, Father God, that you will speak to the recesses of our hearts in the name of Christ and let your word bring healing let it bring restoration let it bring deliverance let it bring peace let it bring joy today in the name of jesus confirm the things oh god that you have spoken to us before let's let today's word bring confirmation in jesus name thank you father hallelujah blessed be your name oh god we love you lord we appreciate you and we thank you for this moment blessed be your name father god hallelujah rabba kasende reboshanda in Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you, people of God. Good to see you. Good to see you. You will be, What you are here today will be relative to you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. It's December, guys. And it's our month of celebration. It's our month of celebration. Hallelujah. And this month, I know that, I, I know that the Lord will... will cause us he will give us even more reasons to celebrate and dance and rejoice yeah he will give us more reasons to celebrate and dance and rejoice but typically um in this ministry we take out december just to appreciate god that is what we do in this ministry december we take it out to not just ask anything but to thank him for what he has already done to thank him for how he has kept us how he has, how he has protected us we take december to reflect on the faithfulness of god and i know that each and every one of you can testify that yes indeed god has been faithful unto you he has been faithful unto you so that is what we typically do in december at liberty ministries international we come together to thank God, to celebrate God, to celebrate his power in our lives, to celebrate his grace in our lives, to celebrate a fact that he did not give us up to the, to the vices of the enemy, that he did not even give us up to our own devices. He didn't leave us to ourselves, that he is gracious to us. He is kind to us. He is very, very kind and generous. He is a good, good father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I just ask that you allow the Lord to minister to you today. I ask that you allow him to speak to your heart today in the name of Jesus Christ for, for everything that you will hear today. Open up your heart and let the Lord speak to you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. As I said, it's our month of celebration and I want to talk to you from the subject of it is time to celebrate isn't that original <laughs> it's a month of celebration and my subject is it is time to celebrate it is time to celebrate it is time for you to celebrate your time to celebrate has come this is not a time for you to be sorrowful this is not a time for you to be sad this is a time for you to celebrate hallelujah hallelujah this is the time for you to celebrate Thank you, Jesus. If you have your Bible, please, um, I invite you to open your Bible to the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 10. Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 10. That is where my assignment is tonight, and I will read. It says, I delight greatly in the Lord my God. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in his robe of, of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself 
with her jewels. Hallelujah. I delight greatly. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul, my very soul rejoices in my God. Why? Because he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Oh, Father God, the grass fades and the flowers fade away, but your word remains the same. Father God, I ask that you open up our spirit today and speak to your word. Speak your word into our hearts and help us to understand. Thank you, Father. We say speak, Lord. For your servant is listening in jesus name amen so any time of the year people of god any time of the year is a good time to celebrate the goodness of god in our lives okay but particularly as the year is rolling to an end with only a few more days a few more weeks a couple more weeks or so to go before before it closes there is no better time that and then now for us to count our blessings count our blessings and celebrate the goodness of god in our lives there is no better time for you to stop not that you needed to wait until the end of the year before you begin to count your blessing as i said any time in the year is a good time it's a it's a perfect time for us to celebrate the goodness of God, but particularly because that we made it, because it is not everybody that started with us is ending with us. It is not everybody that started this year with us is here today, but because we made it in spite of everything else, because we made it even in the face of everything else, this is a good time to pause, to count your blessings and celebrate the goodness of God for your life. The fact that God has been so very good to you, even when you didn't realize it, God has been so very faithful to you, so very faithful to every one of us. He has been so faithful to, to his, of his promises towards us, to everyone, every one of the promises that he has made. God has been so faithful to us, those promises. He, he has never taken his eyes off of you. And I know that many times it doesn't feel like it. You feel like God has shifted his focus away from you. He's not even looking at you right now. But that is never the case. That is never the case. He, God, God, God has never stopped being mindful of us. Matter of fact, he said that he could never, he couldn't ever forget us. Why? Because he has inscribed our names on the palm of his hands so, so he is actually aware of every little detail of your life acutely aware intimately aware of every little detail of your life he knows everything god knows even the things that you yourself don't know even the things that baffle you about yourself even the things that you are thinking how is this going to happen what am i how am i going to do it god knows everything he is intimately aware of every little detail of your life. But some of you may say, well, if God is so mindful of me, why have these happened? Or why have these not happened? Where are all his promises to me? Some of you may say, why did I have to go through the things that I went through? Why did God allow these things in my life? If, why and why? Is that not, you know, and the questions could go on and on and on until they become your focus and rob you of your joy. And we don't realize that this is what happens because it is very easy to focus on these things because they are real, because these are the experiences that you are having, because you are not making it up, because you are not speculating, because it is real. It is very real. You are feeling it. You are going through it. So you ask those questions until those questions are all consuming. They're all overwhelming. You know, the, the situation becomes very, very overwhelming. And it is not that God is asking us to repress our feelings. 
things. Let me just make that clear before I continue. God doesn't want you to repress your feelings. He, he acknowledges how you feel. The Lord acknowledges your pains. The Lord acknowledges your disappointment. The Lord acknowledges your fears, your worries, your anxieties. He acknowledges everything because he is a good father. You have to remember that even though he's our God, he's also our father and he's a good, good father and he cares about you. He acknowledges your feelings. God is not dismissing how you feel, okay? He is not dismissing how you feel. He's not asking you to repress your feelings. But more importantly, the Lord wants you to see that there are so many things you can celebrate and thank him for in spite of the negative experiences that you may be having, in spite of the negative things that your, your physical eyes may be seeing, in spite of any disappointments you may have had during the course of this year, maybe in, in, in terms of um, a seemingly unanswered prayers, okay? Or maybe because somebody disappointed you that they did not, you did not expect to disappoint you. Maybe it could be in terms of sickness, whatever, whatever it is, you know, the Lord wants you to know that there are more things that he wants, that, that he wants to show you. He wants to raise, raise your awareness to and the negative things that you may be going through there are more things that you can thank him for that you can celebrate the lord wants to focus your mind on the things that matter which are the things that will give strength to your soul because when you focus on the things that have not yet been when you focus on the things that, is, that have that have failed and the things that have not worked the way you expect them to work those things will the, the feelings of those things those feelings that you're having will rob you of your joy okay and will bring weakness and weariness to your soul but when you focus on the goodness of god that will strengthen your bones that will strengthen your soul okay that will give you strength and that is why this this scripture is telling us our main text today isaiah 61 10 is telling us says my soul rejoices in my god hallelujah my soul rejoices in my god so the Lord wants to give strength to your soul and he wants you he wants you to end this year strong and to enter into next year even stronger hallelujah so let's take it uh, one uh, one our main text says i delight greatly in the lord my soul rejoices in my god i delight greatly in my, my my soul this is not this is not a superficial lip service to god this is not just saying oh praise god just like everybody else is saying that doesn't go deep into the recesses of your soul okay this is not this is not something superficial or lip service just doing what everybody else is just a cliche just speaking like we say speaking christianese oh praise god oh thank you jesus that doesn't have any meaning to you but this is a truly heartfelt gratitude to God because your soul is the seat of your feelings, the seat of your memory, the seat of your emotions and the decisions. That soul, that is the, that is the core of your being, the, the very center of your being, where, you, where your feelings emanate from. The word soul in Hebrew is nefesh, nefesh. And it means, amongst other things, it means life, it means mind, it means desires, heart, appetite, and person. So it's who you truly are from the core of your being. So in other words, it is the very essence of who you are, the core of who you are. And it is with this intensity the totality of who you are, that you should rejoice in God. With in the, the totality of who you are, you should bring 100% of yourself to the table. You should praise God, rejoice, let your soul, when your soul wants to be sorrowful, when, when your soul wants to have 1,001 reasons why it should not rejoice, why it, it should be broken, why it should be sorrowful, you just need to remind yourself of the myriad of things that God has done and the myriad of misses that God has made to you. And let your soul, command your soul to rejoice. 
Tell your soul that we are not going to be sorrowful. We are not going to be sad. We are not going to be miserable. We are not going to be depressed. We are going to rejoice in the Lord, in God, our, our salvation. Hallelujah. He says, my soul rejoices in my God. So you are not doing it half-heartedly because you have to remember that God sees our heart. We cannot even give lip service unto God. We might think we are doing it it but God's of our heart he knows how he knows us inside out even more than we know ourselves so we may as well just come even when 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 you don't feel like it but just tell yourself that I will rejoice in the Lord Lord I will rejoice in you it is a decision to rejoice in you and this is why we are told in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 we are told here and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength okay this is about with all your heart with your soul and with all your strength you are going to praise god your praises are going to be genuine they're not going to be fake they're not going to be superficial they're not going to be lip service you're going to recount your blessing you're going to look at your life this year you know there's that song that says that looking back in my life I see things that you have done for me. You are not going to decide that I am going to see the many things that you have not done. No. You are going to say, I see the many things that you have done for me, oh God. I see the many things. I see the accident that you did not allow me to have. I see the accident that I had, but you did not allow it to take me out. Some other people have um, similar accidents. They are not here today. I see you, oh Lord. I see the healing that you have brought into my body. I see how you provided for me. I I see how you protected me, how you shielded me. I see the many things that you have done for me. I see your hand upon my life. So therefore, my soul rejoices. Hallelujah. My soul rejoices. This is not lip service. You just need to think deeply. You don't even need to think too far. Just consider the goodness of God, the mercies of God. It is, but the Bible says that it is by the Lord's mercy that we have not consumed. Oh, hallelujah. It is by the Lord's mercy you, have not, you, are, you are not consumed. Think about the, same, the, the people that have taken the same route, the same, the same airplane that you have taken, the same bus that you have taken, the same journey that you have taken, that not everybody made it. He says, I will rejoice in you and be glad. I will extol your love more than wine. It, that, that, that is the, the book of, um, I think, song, song, song of Songs, Song of Solomon. Hallelujah. So, so you think about the goodness of God, when you begin to think about his mercy, when you think begin to think about the fact that he did not give you what you deserve, he has had mercy on you. All of us, nobody excluded, each and every one of us, every last one of us, but God overlooked all of our mercy. He, he looked beyond our foolishness and he saw our needs. He did not say that, oh, because you have, been, you have done this today, you have done that, I am not going to bless you. No, he looked beyond our faults and he saw our needs and he rose up to meet each and every one of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you think about that, you know you know that you just have to rejoice and celebrate. Celebrate the goodness of God from the bottom of your heart. Hallelujah. From the bottom of your heart. So, so when you when, when God demands the totality of us, not half measure of us, not half hearted, not half measure, the totality 100% of you. And when you allow the scripture to focus your mind as our, as our uh, scripture today uh, is doing, not only will you have the right perspective, you will also receive the supernatural grace and power to rejoice and celebrate in spite of the present circumstance. You will receive, if you allow the scripture to focus your mind, if you just, if you don't struggle, because this is the thing about the Holy Spirit, he is not going to struggle with you, but the word of the Lord has come to you today. And if you allow him to focus your mind, not only will you have the right perspective, because your, there will be a mind shift, right? You will have a, a healthier perspective on life. You will have a, a healthier perspective on your life. You, it, it doesn't matter what, how you um, reflect on everything that you have written down, every expectation or whatever. If you allow the scripture to focus your mind today, not only will you have the right perspective, but you will also receive the supernatural grace and power to rejoice and celebrate in spite of your present circumstance. 
You can rejoice in the face of adversity. Hallelujah. You will receive supernatural grace because God sees your heart that you have made the decision to rejoice. And like I said, he knows us very deeply because we have aligned our hearts with him. We love him. He will give you the grace, the supernatural grace to rejoice. And people will look at you and say, really, really? They will not understand. They will not understand that you are, you are literally functioning under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You are functioning under the influence of the Holy Spirit. You are functioning under the, under the influence of the power of God, of the supernatural grace of God. And I pray for you today in Jesus' mighty name that the Lord will overload you with his supernatural grace in the name of Jesus Christ, that you will be able to do the things that naturally you would not have been able to do. It is time to celebrate. Somebody type, I will celebrate. I've made up my mind. I will celebrate. I will celebrate. To celebrate means to acknowledge a significant event with a social gathering or an enjoyable activity. To celebrate, it means to acknowledge. You're acknowledging a significant event in your life with a social gathering or an enjoyable activity. For example, like celebrating your birthday, like celebrating your wedding anniversary, like celebrating your, your children's birthday or, you know, or a, an achievement, celebrating, acknowledging. So when you are doing that, when you are celebrating these, these things, um, uh, you are acknowledging that they happen. Okay, you are acknowledging the events in your life. And so you need to recall the goodness of God towards you over the course of this year and acknowledge them with celebration. Ac recall the goodness of God towards you this year and intentionally acknowledge them with celebration. You don't necessarily have to throw a party, but do something exciting. Jump up and shout and praise God. Hallelujah. Be, be jubilant. Hallelujah. Be jubilant and thank God. Let him see how grateful you are. Let, me, let him see that you are celebrating him. Say, God, I am celebrating you. You can jump up. You can do a backflip if you want to do a backflip. You can, you can swing on the chandeliers if you want to swing on the chandeliers. But do something exciting. Do something exhilarating. Do something powerful to celebrate the goodness of God, to acknowledge the goodness, goodness of God in your life. We need to acknowledge the faithfulness of God. God has been so good and faithful towards us. Hallelujah. Rather than complaining, the moment your eyes are open in the morning, because you have to remember, you have to remember that it is not the alarm clock that woke you. It is the Lord that woke you. If you don't believe me, put an alarm clock next to a corpse. Put an alarm clock next to a dead body and see if that dead body will wake up. No, we know that that dead body will not wake up. So we know that even though we use the alarms, alarm system, it is because the Lord allows us to be, to be conscious, to be alive, to be, to, be, to be alert so that we can wake up when the alarm goes off. So as soon as your eyes are open in the morning, make it a habit that the first thing that you say is thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for our another day the day that you have made and i will rejoice and be glad in it i will rejoice my decision is to rejoice in this day and to be glad in it i make a decision that i am going to rejoice i make a decision that i am going to be glad i make a decision that i am going to see your goodness your faithfulness i am not going to see negativity i am going to see your greatness regardless of what what life may throw at me regardless of what awaits me in this in this, I know that you are greater. So I make a decision. I have made up my mind that I will rejoice in you and I will be glad. Hallelujah. So, so you celebrate the goodness of God. And if you are still struggling, <laughs> after everything that I've said, if you are still str struggling with why you think you should rejoice and celebrate with all your soul, Listen to what our main text tells us today. It says, 
for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed, arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, he has, can, can, are, you, are you following this? He has clothed me with garments of salvation. So if you're struggling with why you think you should celebrate, let us take these two, you know, there are two things that we need to acknowledge from this scripture. Let us look at one. He has clothed me, you know, um, that writer says that I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. Why? Number one, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. The Lord has clothed you. Not that he is going to clothe you with a garment of salvation. You know, you are wearing salvation. Hallelujah. You are decked in salvation. And this is not just talking about the salvation of your soul from hell to heaven. It's not just talking about that. Because that is just the starting point of his generosity towards you. That is just the beginning. He saved your soul from hell. He redeemed your life from destruction. That is the beginning. And he didn't do that and, and then leave you to, to the rest of, you know, to for, 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 for the rest of your life to just get on with life on your own. No, no. The scripture is, is also, it's not, it's also talking about saving you from all forms of harm from all forms of harm. It is talking about your deliverance, okay, from all forms of evil. It is talking about an all-round protection for you and for everyone and everything that concerns you. So the fact that you are close with salvation is a holistic, it's an all-round thing. It is not just the salvation of your soul that, that you wander through. You wander through life and live a defeated life until you eventually die and go to heaven. That is not, that is not what, what the scripture is saying. He has, he has clothed you, hallelujah. He has clothed you with a garment of salvation. Garment of salvation. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 7, verses I believe verse 24 and 25, I think, or 25 and 26. He says, because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he, is, he, since he always lives to make intercession for them. He is able, Jesus, your high priest, he lives every day. He is seated at the right hand of God. It lives every day to make intercession for you. And the Bible says, therefore, he is able to save you to the uttermost. He is he's able to save you to the uttermost. That word uttermost in the Greek means absolutely. He is able to save you absolutely. It, it also means completely. So he is able to save you absolutely and completely. And it also means perfectly. He is able to save you perfectly. You see, the Lord will do everything. He, 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 the salvation that he has given you is, 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 is a holistic one. I said, he will perfect everything that concerns you. He saves you absolutely, completely, and perfectly. And that is why we cannot be afraid of what we, we uh, has not happened, of what we, 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 we cannot yet see. That is why we need to trust this Lord Jesus, that he is seated at the right hand and making intercession for us. He's interceding on your behalf. His blood is speaking. He's speaking mercy on your behalf. He's, he's interceding for you, praying for you before the Father. Hallelujah. So, so we see that um, the garment of salvation, the garments of salvation that this scripture itself is talking about covers you absolutely and covered completely within any part of your life, vulnerable to the vice of the enemy. It, it covers you absolutely. There isn't any aspect of your life that is vulnerable to the devices of your enemy or to their vice or to their vices. Okay, you are covered. Your life is covered. Your mind is covered. Your home is covered. Your family, your family is covered. Your properties are covered. You need to understand that 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 everything about you is covered. Your business is covered. Your dreams and your vision is covered. Don't be afraid of what anybody is saying to you of what any threat anybody is making. Look, the Bible says that the God 
that did not make the heaven or the earth will perish from under the heavens and the earth. So don't be afraid of anybody who is making any threats to you. You are covered. You are covered. No evil will befall you. No calamity will come near your dwelling place. No weapon formed against you will prosper. The Bible also says that who says and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it. Anything that the Lord has not commanded cannot happen to you. Anything that the Lord has not commanded, anything that he has not allowed cannot happen to you. And if God allows anything, you have to know that it is for your own good. It will work out in your favor eventually. It may be temporarily painful, but it will work out for your good eventually. And so your life is covered. The Lord will never ever leave you vulnerable to the, to the attacks of the enemy. Uh, he's your God. He's passionate about you. He's passionate about you. He, he wants the best for you. He gave his life for you. There is a song that, say, that says that he gave his life. What more could he give? He gave his very life. Hallelujah. So he will not allow your life to be vulnerable. He will not allow your, your, your family to be vulnerable. So that is why we need to to remain a garment, that garment of salvation that covers you, that covers your home, that covers your finances, that covers that covers everything. He will not allow even the devourer to come into, into your properties. Remain in that. that. Make sure that you are wearing that garment, that garment of salvation. Don't, don't ever take it off. Don't ever take it off by walking outside of, of, um, of his protection, by walking outside of his law. <coughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That garment of salvation covers you perfectly. The Bible says in Psalm 18, verse 30, Psalm 18, verse 30 say, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. Because not only, not only does that garment protect you absolutely and completely, it also protects you perfectly perfectly god will do everything perfectly he will cover you he covers you perfectly he will perfect everything that concerns you don't be afraid don't don't be dismayed he covers you so perfectly he does everything perfectly because he is a perfect god he is a perfect god he is a shield for all those who take refuge in him the bible says that his way is perfect and his word is flawless. Hallelujah. And our appropriate response to that, when we consider all of that, when we consider how perfectly the Lord covers us, when we consider how completely and how absolutely the Lord covers us, our appropriate response is not to be afraid of what, of what somebody is saying, of, of some threat that we think is coming. Our appropriate response is to celebrate. Our appropriate response is to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know you cover me. I know you cover me. I know you will not allow me to, to be to be prey to the enemy. I know you, you care about me. You are acutely aware of every little detail of my life. So it is to acknowledge that God has not left you uncovered or and vulnerable, but he has perfectly and completely covered you with his garment of salvation. Hallelujah. He's covered you with his garment of salvation. So, child of God, don't take that garment off. Remember this scripture. Anytime the enemy wants to bring fear into your heart and wants to tell you that this is going to happen or that is not going to happen, regardless of what your eyes are seeing, present circumstance, uh, um, regardless of present circumstance, present circumstance notwithstanding, when the enemy wants to bring fear into your heart or doubt into your heart, reply him with this word. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. I am clothed with the garments of salvation. Hallelujah. Time to celebrate. It is time to rejoice. It is time to let God know how much you appreciate him. That you have counted your blessings this year. You have named them one by one and you have seen what the Lord has done for you. You have counted your blessings this year. You are not sitting down there moaning and complaining and being bitter about something that has not happened. No, you are saying, Lord, I thank you. 
I count my blessings and I thank you. I see the many things that you have done. I see that if it had not been for you, I would not be here today. I, I see that if it had not been for you, whatever may have happened to you, listen, you live to tell the story. You live to tell the story. Hallelujah. So we thank the Lord. We celebrate him. We acknowledge him for what he has done in our lives this year. I am so grateful to God. I'm so grateful to God. Every day is another chance. Every day is another opportunity. I know that it's not everybody that gets that chance. I know that it's not everybody that gets that opportunity, but here I am. Here I am. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your manifold blessings upon our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your manifold blessings upon this ministry. Thank you, Lord, for your manifold blessings upon everyone on this uh, broadcast today because I know that you are faithful and true. Thank you, Jesus. So we look at the script, that uh, we look at that scripture, our, our main text today, Isaiah 61 verse 10. So the first thing is that he said he has clothed me. The, the first reason why, why we have to rejoice is that because he has clothed us with, with garments of salvation. And then secondly, the second part of that scripture says, it says that he has arrayed us. It says, he, he, he arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. He has arrayed you. So array means to deck, to drape. You know, when you drape a cloth on, on something, that it, 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 it gives off the feeling of luxury. So it's not just, he's not just, scantily throwing something at you you are draped hallelujah you are draped with the robe of his righteousness that's why nobody can accuse you of anything don't allow anybody to accuse you of anything because the lord himself has draped you arrayed you decked you with the robe of his righteousness so this tells you that you are in the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God took off your, your robe of filthiness. God took off your robe of unworthiness. He has taken off your robe of, of guilt and shame, your robe of inadequacy and hopelessness, and he has draped you with his robe of righteousness so that when God looks at you, he sees his righteousness in you. Every time God looks at you, he sees his righteousness because you are, you are, you are draped, you are arrayed. I wish that, that, that I, I, I could have some analogy or some, some prop that I could use to, to describe it to you. But if you can imagine a uh, um, um, luxurious material, you know, being, being draped generously on, on something. So it, it's so generously. It's not just scantily. You are draped in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. You are draped in the righteousness of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, so this is why when some people say, oh, I'm only a miserable sinner. If it's not, it's not the grace of God. You know, I'm, no, you are not. You are not. You are no longer a miserable sinner. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, I I I, I think it's it's an um, erroneous teaching, erroneous doctrine, when people say that, oh, I'm, I'm a wretched sinner saved by grace. You were a wretched sinner, and you have been saved by grace. And God says that He drapes you in His righteousness in his robe of righteousness. So between you and God, one of you is lying. And you need to determine who is between the two of you because God doesn't lie. God is saying that when he looks at you, unless you, you are not born again, unless you have rejected Jesus, that that's another thing. That's another story entirely. But as long as you are living your life through, through, through Jesus Christ, as, as a, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, as a, as a, as a citizen of the kingdom of God, when God looks at you, 
when God looks at you, he's looking at his righteousness. He's looking at the, the rope of, of his righteousness that he has put on you, okay? That is what he sees. He doesn't see, the Bible says that, um, um, is it first John 1, 9, that says that if, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 5, 7, say, it, it says that if anyone is in Christ, Christ Jesus is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So do not allow the Pharisees and the religious, the religious people, the moral police to hold you to ransom, to hold you to ransom to your past, to hold you to ransom to your particular weakness. Everybody has their own particular weaknesses that the Lord is working on you through. We are all maturing day by day. And God is looking at you. He's looking at his righteousness. God is looking at you. He's looking at, at, at somebody who he has decked in his righteousness. Are you trying to tell me that the blood of Jesus is not strong enough to remove all your guilt, to remove all your shame, to remove all your inadequacies. Because Isaiah tells me in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 that even if our sin was as red as crimson, he will, he will, he will, the, his blood will make it as white as snow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't listen to the religious people, the Pharisees, the, mor the morality police that is holding you to your particular uh, proclivities or tendencies. Not that we should we should revel in those things, but God God is at work in us, perfecting us. Bible even tells us that He is the one who is at work in us, both to do and to both to will and to do of His good pleasure. So long as we our desire is to please Him on a daily basis, make sure that you are wearing that robe. Make sure that you never take off that robe. Hallelujah. That robe of righteousness. Don't ever take it off. Don't let, ever let anything, don't ever let your mind, your own mind, your, take it off of you like by inflicting um, guilt on your own self, living under the weight of guilt and shame that Jesus Christ has already taken off of you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God sees his righteousness in you. God sees his righteousness in you. So this is evidence that God has not called you into the state of doing. But because there is nothing that you can do on your own that can make you righteous before God. He hasn't called you to do. You can't do it. You can't earn it. We cannot earn the righteousness of God. But he has called you into a state of being. You only need to be what he has called you to be. And don't allow anybody to take off your robe. As I said, don't, don't try to do. Don't have a list of to do. To do list. If I do this, if I do that. Just he has called you into, into a sense of being. He says, be, be holy. For your father is holy. So he's called you into a state of being. Make sure that you remain in that state of being. Because when you move out of that state of being and you move to trying to do, then you are in trouble. Because then you are doing it in your own power. And if you could do it, if anybody could do it in their own power, there would not have been any point in Jesus coming. But because God saw, the Bible says in the book of Romans that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We, we couldn't earn it. We, we, we don't we, we, can't, we, we could never ever end the righteousness of God. It is impossible. It is impossible. So stay in that state of, of being. Make sure that you are wearing your robe of righteousness. Look at yourself in the mirror and, and ask God to open your eyes to see what God is seeing. Every time you look at yourself in the mirror, say, Lord, I want to see who you see because you see your righteousness in me. You see me through the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, when you look at me, you see your robe of righteousness upon me. You have draped me with the robe of your righteousness. Hallelujah. And, and, and uh, when, when Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says that God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 
so that in Christ we might become the righteousness of God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And this is not for you to celebrate and dance. Knowing that you are the righteousness of God. I'm trying to show you some reasons why you should be celebrating right now. Why you should be you should be having jumping up and down and rejoicing right now. Why you should be jubilating right now that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There is no amount of money that can buy that. There is no amount of wealth that can buy that. So you need to rejoice. You need to celebrate. It is time for you to celebrate. It is not time for you to mourn. It is not time for cry. It is time to celebrate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You see, rejoicing and celebrating is a state of being, not just something that you do. I know this is deep. I know I'm talking about being, but I want you to just allow the Holy Spirit to, to explain this to you, what you're hearing from me today. Thank you, Lord. Rejoicing and celebrating is not just something that you do as a child of God, because if, if it's, it's about something that you do, then it means that it is, it is um, um, what's the word that I'm, you, that I'm looking for? Your celebration and your, your rejoicing will be induced by external factors. What happened? What did not happen? And we know that that could go up, that could go down. It's never stable. But God has called you into a state of being not just something that you do. It is an actual realm, a domain where you can choose to stay or not to stay. People who choose not to stay, they are moved by external circumstances. External circumstances determine their joy, determine whether or not they're going to be happy, whether or not they're going to rejoice. But when you live in the realm, when you this is where you stay, okay? This is where you stay. It's a state of being. This is you are not you are not you are not trying to to do it. It, it just is where you are. All right. Then you rejoice anyway. It's a realm that can only be accessed in the kingdom of God, not outside the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God. And as you remain there, your mind is protected from being consumed by overwhelmed, uh, from being consumed and overwhelmed by external circumstances. When you remain there, when you remain in that state, your mind will not be consumed or overwhelmed by or sorrow or, or with feelings of disappointment or failure. Even when, when, the circumstances may want to offer you these things, okay? They want to offer you this and feelings of failure, feelings of disappointment and stuff like that. But you, it's not appealing to you, okay? Because you live in the realm of celebration. You live in the kingdom of God, in the realm of celebration. And deciding to remain in a state of rejoicing and celebration will enable you to go through the tough times <clears throat> will enable you to go through the tough times and the tough circumstances without being crushed by the circumstances. You will not even smell like it. You will not even look like it. So it is acknowledging that tough circumstances happen. Tough things happen, okay? Life happens. We all know that. But remaining in that realm, remaining in that realm of celebration will enable you Okay, will 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 enable you to go through those circumstances without the circumstances crushing you. The and the Bible tells us in Isaiah forty three verse two, it says, "When you pass through waters, I will be with you, and when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not consume you. The flames will not set you ablaze." This is because the Lord has covered you with his garments of salvation. Remember, he, he saves you to the uttermost. Okay? You may be passing through things, but that thing doesn't have to pass through you. You may be going through things, but that thing doesn't need to go through you. 
because you'll come out on the other side stronger and better. Hallelujah. And more powerful. Uh, he has covered you with his garments of salvation and arrayed you in his robes of righteousness. He will not allow you to look like what you have been through or even currently going through in, in, you know, in, some, in, some, in some people's case. But you need to make a decision today to remain in this realm of glory, to remain in this realm of celebration, to remain in this state of being, this state of being, this state of rejoicing, okay? Okay, that is the place where you are covered. So that is the place where you are covered. And as I want, as I round up now, to count your blessings today, rather than your losses, rather than counting your losses, make a decision today to count your blessings. Because whatever you may have lost this year, the Lord wants me to tell you that whatever you may have lost this year, as painful as it may have been, God doesn't need that thing for you for your next level. What whatever it is that you may have lost. This year, any money, any jobs, whatever it is that you may have lost, you don't need it. God doesn't need it for what he wants to do for your next dimension, for the next place where he's taking you for 2023. So rejoice because this there is more in front of you than what is behind you. Rejoice, child of God. Rejoice, celebrate and dance because there is more in front of you than what you have behind you. It is time to celebrate, not a time to mourn. It is time to celebrate, not a time to complain. It is time to celebrate, not a time to grumble. It is time to celebrate. Celebrate, the there's a myriad of blessings. There is a myriad of blessings coming your way. Celebrate, make a decision to begin to thank God in advance. Thank God in advance for what he's going to do for you. And let me tell you also, if you, if you, if you, uh, if you had joined us at our, uh, our, our uh, uh, devotional and prayer time yesterday morning, you will have heard when the Lord was telling us that we should, we should understand that what he has in front of, you, of us is more than what, what we left behind. He has a great plan for you for 2023. And every promise, every promise that he has made for you in this year, 2022, none of it will go without being unfulfilled. Take God off of your uh, clock watching. Stop clock watching God and timing him that by this time you should have done this. By this time, this should have happened. By this time, this should have happened. Every promise that God has made will be fulfilled at the appropriate time. There is a time for everything. The prophecy has been released. The promises have been made. And there will be a performance of every word that the Lord has spoken into your life. So child of God, I encourage you today to dance and celebrate in the name of Jesus. Make a decision to end this year on a high. We hear you, Lord. We hear you. We will rejoice and be glad in you. We will rejoice and be glad in you. We will rejoice always. We count our blessings today. We count our blessings and we see all the things that you have done. We count our blessings, oh God. We look back in our lives. You see the many things, the many blessings that you have done, that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for the hope that we have in you. Some people right now they are hopeless they are hopeless they don't even have hope anymore they are not even able to hope but we can hope in you hallelujah christ in us the hope of glory we thank you oh god and your word tells us that you know the plans that you have for us not of evil but of love to give us hope and the future we trust you oh god we believe every we are expectant to god and we thank you that there will be a full performance of every word thank you father we appreciate you lord in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I pray that you have been blessed. I pray that the Lord has spoken to you from this message today. And I hope that you have made up your mind to live in that realm of celebration. Don't allow any suggestion to take you out of it. Make sure that you keep on your robe of righteousness that the Lord has draped you with and your cloth of salvation, the garment of salvation that he has, that he has put on you. Make sure that you keep them on all the time and time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God bless you. 
God bless you. Have a great, great week. And I look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. I trust that you have been blessed by today's message. For more inspirational and life-transforming messages, head over to our Facebook page at Liberty Ministries International or our YouTube channel, also at Liberty Ministries International. While you are there, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our videos so that more people can also be blessed. Join us next time for more life-transforming messages. Destiny awaits you.